Hey, welcome to my show. And today we're going to be discussing um, heat timers, very valve, and why I really don't think uh, that this valve represents a good value for your steam heating dollar. So let's take a look at it here. Um, it is, there you are, your very valve, uh, quick vent, heat timer corporation, Fairfield, New Jersey. And you, uh, you got your eighth inch uh, threaded connection onto your uh, radiator. This is uh, the side version. And then they have a version that comes down. As you can see the uh, uh, blown molded plastic has a, uh, a space for each one. And this is fully open. And this is fully closed. There we go. And it is a hefty valve. Uh, it's got it set to grams here. And uh, it comes out at about 92 grams. Whereas, say, the uh, competitor here, uh, the Vent Bright number one, one of my favorite vents and you can see this one was pulled from service because uh, it got painted although it still works i tested it back in april and there it is um it's weighing at 86 grams so this is uh feels heftier and uh well constructed in in that sense um they talk about a uh, phosphorus ron bellows uh it does talk about an o-ring i think in their ad here let's see uh does it talk about an o-ring i thought it mentioned i thought it mentioned an o-ring yes o-ring seal uh, i have a little problem with the o-ring seal in the presence of steam because generally the o-ring is epdm and ebt e edpm uh breaks down in the presence of steam or at least high temperatures uh, doesn't last very long. Uh, and then it says here, um, steam or condensate does not enter valve body. Well, that doesn't make any sense because, of course, in order for the um, phosphor bronze bellows to actually um, expand and shut, uh, steam has to enter and heat this up first for that to work. So I don't, and steam, when it enters into a relatively cold vent, will turn into condensate. So I'm not really sure if that's true or not. So I'm starting to question uh, some of their stuff here. Um, it also says it outlasts uh, bimetal uh, air vents. I'm not sure it does that. Uh, the phosphor bronze bellows does have uh, usually an alcohol mixture in it, which uh, Eventually, when this opens and closes enough times, this will fail, whereas the bimetallic valve, there's there's no liquid to escape, so I don't think that's true. Um, the other issue is that on this uh, comparison chart of the various venting rates, which is uh, uh, done, as I say, by an independent testing lab, which I believe is... The Center for Energy and an Environment. Let's see if that's right there. According to this, um, they're showing zero flow rate. Well, that's not true. Um, if you you can test that yourself, you get your uh, if you get this vent and you shut that all the way and blow into here, you can blow air uh, through here. So air does escape. You can't use this to fully shut off like you can. Even this, when you got this shut, this will actually shut and prevent the radiator from heating if you want to shut the radiator off. In fact, that's probably the best way to shut a radiator off and not use the radiator valve. Um, so we got that, that little issue. I'm calling BS on, on that. Um, so the other thing is these things are notorious for for spitting. There's no float in here, so if a lot of water collects in uh, the radiator due to a flood situation, this will just uh, let it pass uh, with no problem. The float in here and, and many other uh, vents, not all, but many other vents, uh, is not 100% shut off mine, but uh, at least it'll prevent, uh, at least it'll try to work to prevent uh, 
huge amount of water squirting out of here. This won't do that. Um, the other disadvantage of this is that while it is true that the venting capacity on this is one of the uh, largest known, and uh, it says it's better than a Gorton D, um, a Gorton D really is too big for a radiator, and and definitely this is uh, even worse, and here's why. If you believe, or if it's the only way that you can get um, steam into uh, a radiator is by putting uh, a huge, even a Gorton C, or God help you, a Gorton 6, which is even less, if you're in this range, you have probably got other problems, and those other problems probably are that your main vents are not big enough. Um, you don't have proper main venting, and so this is usually a workaround for poor main venting. Now, if you've got um, end of mains that are covered with asbestos and you really don't feel like shelling out two grand to have the asbestos removed, to have new uh, proper main vents installed, like it should have been done at the get-go uh, 100 years ago. Um, I get that. So you got to do what you got to do. But if you have venting or the capability of main venting and you don't want to mess with that and instead get one of these, um, that's probably not the wisest policy. Even in their study, they say the purpose of the main vent line is to rapidly vent the relatively large amount of air in the main lines, this allows the main line to fill more quickly and thus reduces the time difference of steam arrival of different risers. So they know that. And so if you vent the main quickly, then you can vent the, the radiator slowly and therefore not have a whole lot of spitting and banging. If you vent a radiator and if you put one of these on here and it still doesn't heat, then the problem is probably the piping or there's some sort of blockage. And as you can hear the uh, heavy breathing, as it were, the rapid creation of vacuum and steam, vacuum and steam, vacuum and steam, as it kind of puffs in and out. And the chances are you have a pitch problem, and that should be corrected before the radiator heats, and then you, then you don't need this. So this really is a workaround for something that you should be able to be fixed. You should, in most cases, be able to fix without resorting to this. And they've known about these main, uh, the use of the main vents, uh, proper main vents for a long time. So let's uh, take a look at Audell's <laughs> oil burner guide from the from the 60s. Actually, this is uh, originally copyrighted. Ooh, where is it? Had it here. Um, copyrighted in 1946, probably even earlier than that. And um, Mr. Graham here is uh, definitely a crusty fellow. If you can read that, um, only a pneumatic idiot or unscrupulous contractor would expect the toy vent. That's this guy, ridiculous. I mean, he just he labels it right out. Uh, toy vent at the end of the radiator uh, to clear the line of air and get steam to the radiator. And he discusses uh, the various venting strategies, adjustable vents, non-adjustable vents, and um, how this is so small that this radiator here is cold, no matter how large this vent is. And uh, talking about triple venting strategies. And um, even with adjustable vents, uh, different, you know, throttling back vents and you have difficulty. So he actually sometimes in cases it recommends drilling out for two vents on a very large radiator at the end of the main if you're having trouble. So what will happen is the steam will arrive, shut off one vent, and then the other vent continues to to work, you, you, you've throttled back the radiator. Now the condens you've generated a lot of condensate, so you're giving it a chance to get back to the um, uh, the boiler um, without being uh, the great inrush of steam to uh, carry the condensate back to our, our uh, overly large vent here. And that goes for Gortons too. If you throw a Gorton D on the end of a radiator, there's, there's, a, there's a problem. Um, so I hope that was helpful. Uh, I know I was throwing a lot of information at you. I hope you stuck around. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, God, please uh, put them in the comments below. And I thank you very much for your support. And uh, happy steaming. <laughs>